Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Wednesday, April 21st. Hope you're having a good week so far. Now we're going to have a lot of fun this morning, but we're also going to get serious for a few minutes. We're going to start off with our 9 at 9. The verdict is in. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin has been found guilty in the killing of George Floyd and is convicted of all three charges. According to President Joe Biden, it is a step in the right direction, but there is still work to be done. The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation is looking into an incident of a police officer shooting and killing a teenage girl in Columbus. Body cam footage appears to show Bryant swinging a knife at others in a group. Family members have identified the girl as 15-year-old Makia Bryant. And here at home, it could be several weeks before an official ruling is made on a civil lawsuit over the Sutherland Springs Church shooting. The 2017 shooting claimed the lives of 26 people. More than 200 National Guard troops are being called to the southern border. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey is declaring a state of emergency due to a surge of undocumented immigrants who are in federal custody. Children are testing positive for COVID-19, accounting for nearly 21% of new cases around the country. Meantime, Pfizer is looking to extend its emergency use authorization to those 12 to 15 year olds. Vaccine advisors to the CDC are expected to recommend the Johnson & Johnson vaccine be administered again under restrictions. The advisory panel will have specific recommendations about which people may be best suited to take the single dose vaccine. And you might have to pay more for Pampers, Loves, and feminine hygiene products this fall. Parker & Gamble says it's raising prices on those items because raw materials are getting more expensive. The company says it will charge retailers like Walmart, Target, and Costco roughly 5 to 9% more. More than 135 million Americans are breathing unhealthy air. That's according to the annual State of the Air report by the American Lung Association. Bear County received an F in the ozone category and a B in particle pollution. And President Joe Biden says the U.S. will cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least half by 2030. The new target would nearly double America's previous commitment to reduce greenhouse gases. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And it is still chilly outside. I went outside yeah. to get my second round of coffee. And, you know, I was just your second round of coffee. Yeah, my second round. Okay. The first round was gone this morning and it was so cold. I, I just like, oh, I don't need a jacket because it's like, you know, the parking lot's like right there. Very cold, Justin. It is so cold. Come from weather 101, we know that there is a wind chill factor out there because it's below 50 degrees. Boom. Knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> Dropping some knowledge. I laid it on you right there, buddy. Love it. <laughs> yes, indeed. We do have wind chill values that we're dealing with this morning. It's been well below average all morning long. We didn't quite get down to a record, but we were close. 49 right now. North northeast chilly winds at 17 miles per hour. Dew point is at 23. The air is really dry, but we do have some clouds that are drifting through at this hour. Temperatures only get up around 70 this afternoon, so it'll be somewhat of a, of a mild day. We'll lose some of the cloud cover and we should see some sun uh, later this afternoon and we'll lose some of that wind too. 44 Comfort, 43 Kerrville, 46 at Canyon Lake, 48 in New Braunfels, 50 down there in Pleasanton. And temperatures in the mid 50s as you get down towards Catula and Laredo. Wind chill values, your feels like numbers, 43 here in town, 38 in Kerrville, 35 the current wind chill in Fredericksburg. And your forecast today, again, up around 70, partly cloudy by the afternoon. Tomorrow, very different. We get clouds, moisture returns, some showers possible, and a chance for some storms on Friday. Another look at that updated forecast in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Outside with TransGuide, traffic moving pretty smoothly early this morning at 9 o'clock. Not bad. So if you're getting out, just uh, be careful. New this morning, firefighters are working to put out two house fires in the 1900 block of Lamar Street. That's on the city's east side. It started before 8 this morning. The fire department tells us that when they arrived, they found flames at one of the homes. The wind blowing those flames onto a neighboring home, causing it to catch fire. Down power lines also made it difficult for firefighters to get around, but they were able to attack both homes. Everyone in both homes able to get out unharmed. The damage to both homes is significant. The cause of the fire under investigation. Top stories we are following today. A manager of a Castle Hills restaurant now behind bars after he was accused of groping three teenage girls who worked with him. Police tell us 27 year old James Maxwell Crow facing charges of indecency with a child. 
According to an arrest affidavit, all three teenage girls are younger than 17. The affidavit states the girls told Castle Hills police Crow touched them and made sexual advances on several occasions. It's not clear if there are more victims. A woman had to be cut out of her vehicle after she crashed on the city's west side late last night. Police tell us her SUV rolled into a bus stop in a fence. It happened around 11 in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard. That's near Culebra Road and Cincinnati Avenue. Police tell us that the woman was driving with her young daughter when she rolled into a via bus stop. Police say the child was able to get out, but the woman had to be cut out. Police are still investigating to learn how that woman crashed. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help finding a man they say robbed an area Walmart. Have it back on April 7th. SAPD says the suspect entered the Walmart located in the 6700 block of Loop 1604 North and then tried to take some items. Police say the suspect threatens to stab employees with a knife. The suspect got away and has not been found. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward if information you provide leads to an arrest. All right, let's update you on the pandemic. Local health officials report 394 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County and one new death. The Texas Department of State Health Services reports nearly half a million people are fully vaccinated in Bear County. And we want to remind you that University Health made several vaccine appointments available on their website, WeCanDoItSA.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at the three locations listed on your screen. The Alamo Dome also offering walk-in appointments between 2 and 5 this afternoon, every day this week through Saturday. And in your morning headlines, there are talks of distribution expansion of COVID-19 vaccines and researchers made an interesting discover in Maryland. RJ Marquez here with more. Yeah, good morning, guys, and hopefully everyone out there is having a good Wednesday morning. And let's, of course, start today with the reaction to the verdict heard around the world after former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted of all three charges in the death of George Floyd. Many people across the country taking to the streets to celebrate a conviction they say was long overdue. Chauvin was taken away in handcuffs after hearing guilty on all charges and outside the courtroom there were hugs tears and emotions pouring out and chants for George Floyd. After this summer's protests, many people believe their calls for justice are finally being heard. The Floyd family was overjoyed and emotional. You could see right there after hearing the verdict in Houston where George Floyd was from. They also say justice prevailed, but there's still more work to be done. Oh man, so many emotions right now. Today has been an occasion where people can celebrate, but tomorrow, it's back to business. Yeah, President Joe Biden also called the Floyd family to share the moment and also hailed the jury's decision. All right, speaking of President Biden, today he's expected to talk about expanding distribution for the COVID-19 vaccine across the country. This comes as the U.S. hits a milestone and is on pace to meet President Biden's latest vaccine goal of administering 200 million coronavirus shots in his first 100 days in office. The administration says more than 50% of adults are at least partially vaccinated, and now people as young as 16 years old are eligible for the shots. Biden is expected to reflect on these efforts today and outline his administration's plans for the near future. Okay, moving on to a very interesting discovery this morning out of Maryland. The site where Harriet Tubman and her family lived has been discovered. Historians have been searching for the home where Tubman lived when she was younger for nearly two decades. They looked through old land deeds and wills, and last fall, they actually found a coin from all the way back in 1808 in the area where they believe she lived with her family before she escaped slavery. Pieces of pottery, a button, and other artifacts were also found in that area for a decade from 1850 to 1860. Historians say Tubman used the Underground Railroad to rescue slaves from the South before the Civil War. Pretty impressive stuff that, that they have found all those artifacts. Okay, guys, finally, a great story out of Minnesota this morning where a viral video of a sixth grader scoring a touchdown is getting worldwide attention. So check out my guy, Hannah, Kale Hannah right here. He has cerebral palsy, but that has never stopped the 12 year old from taking part in school sports and activities. But there's one thing he hasn't been able to do that much is just play football with his buddies until right now. So check out this video. His buddy set up this game during recess with Kale and watch him go. He takes the ball. You saw him there smiling, juking, weaving his way through players until he takes it all the way to the house and scores a touchdown. It was like 
like suffer. It was like, I did it. It's an awkward age, it's a weird age, and I think sometimes we underestimate our own kids, and um, like I said, that was 100%, that was kid orchestrated, that was them being fun, they, that, they treat Kale like that every day. Yeah, so that was his teacher talking right there about her students. Kale said he actually had a dream about scoring a touchdown before the big game, so this act of caring and compassion from these middle schoolers has been seen by millions around the world. How cool is that, guys? That's very cool. Yeah. You can see he's super excited about <laughs> he's it. He's loving yeah. every moment of it. And just, like we said, taking it to the house. For I was sure. going to say, some of the best stories we ever do is kids helping kids. Exactly. It's like adults the out of the way. We don't yeah. need you guys. You old folks, go on. We got this. Got this yes, exactly. Out. Like the teacher was saying, they yeah. did that all 100% yeah. them and uh, good stuff there good from stuff. Kale. So awesome nice video. blocking too. There you go. They hey, you know what? Every good like, running back. Get out of his way. Every good running back. We know this. Needs a good offensive needs line. Good so up, good please. stuff there. Well, that, was a, that was a good awesome. dream come true. Thank yeah. you, RJ. Awesome nice. story. Love Thanks, those. guys. Speaking of awesome, you know, how many people use Amazon? You use Amazon? I, everybody at this point, I think I, I do. Well, everybody in our newsroom, at least, right? I did not know this this morning. When I first read it, I thought they're going to come to my house and give me a haircut. <laughs> Amazon? That's, wow! That's what I was thinking. A deliver too. a haircut. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Are they going to bring a hairstylist to my front door? No, yeah. that's, that's not what this article means. Oh, but um, but they are uh, getting in the hair salon industry. Uh, according to this article, uh, they have a shop that's located in London, and they offer hairdressing services dressed up with technology and this includes augmented reality hair consultations yeah I, that was kind of funny because when you go in there men and women you, mm -hmm. you walk into the hair salon and you see all these magazines sitting around with all these models male and female models and you say hey, I want my hair looking like that I want my hair looking like that well they can actually put your hair on a computer now well that takes yeah. kind of the fun out of it then because you really no. don't know what it's gonna look like until after you get it cut it's still it's still fun but, well, you, <laughs> without the risk <laughs> well, then what's the fun if there's the, no risk? There's no there's no fun in a if bad you, haircut. Well, David. you know, if I walked in and I saw some dude, I thought, yeah, hey, that's the kind of haircut I yeah. want. And then and you then, want to try it out. And you try it out. And yeah. if it doesn't come out that way, then you go, I'm not getting that haircut next time. Well, well, no, but I'd rather augment it reality So you first. can put it on there and see what it's going to look like. Right. I'd rather do that first. Hey, to me, this what's, is... What's the challenge this in is, that? This is more fun. But um, actually, so this is not in San Antonio by far. Yeah. It says Amazon is currently open to the salons open to Amazon employees only and the general public yeah. will be able to sign up for appointments in the coming weeks but they're not at, they have no plans to add any more salons like in London or something right yeah so, said, yeah, so, well, so you, you don't have to worry about it. you can keep it fun David don't worry I about don't it I think I'm traveling to London to get an Amazon haircut <laughs> soon, so. oh, I got a hairdresser now she's good yeah we're fine stay with that <laughs> time now is 9 10 almost 9 11 well, and about 49 degrees a Target shopper shocked when she saw a snake slithering across cans of beer. What? Uh-huh. What Target has done to prevent this from happening again? Oh, look. Oh. Plus another Katie Science Lab experiment coming up later in the newscast. We're going to teach you how to make bird feeders out of milk jugs. And enrollment for pre-K classes has gone down since the pandemic started. Coming up next, how one area school district is making sure parents are getting their kids prepared for kindergarten. Hey, welcome back. It's 914. The benefits of a pre-K education have been studied and found invaluable for things like numbers and letters and social and emotional skills. But pre-K enrollment across our area dropped this school year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how Somerset ISD is focusing on enrolling pre-K students and their message to parents. This week we do have our pre-K roundup. Our we have staff available that are enrolling children. There's a big push this week at Somerset ISD to register students for pre-K. They can pick up the packet and they can drop it off. They can sit in their car, fill out the application. Helen Ramos, principal at Barrera Veterans Elementary School, says they have created flyers and posted on social media about enrollment starting. We noticed it here in our own district in Somerset that the numbers were declining or when we enrolled kids in the fall and it was significant for us. Ramos says some families did not enroll their children for pre-K this current school year because of safety concerns. At Barrera Veterans Elementary, last school year they had 89 students enrolled in pre-K. This year they only had 49. 
Other districts in our area also saw a decline. And Northeast ISD last year, they had 1,926 students enrolled. This year, they had 1,181. Ramos wants parents to know that it's safe to bring their children back to school. We have little bulldog calls throughout the hallway so that children learn how to space themselves when they're walking in line. Um, we are constantly hand washing. We use sanitizers. Ramos is feeling optimistic. She says now with more people getting the COVID-19 vaccine, she believes enrollment numbers will be better next school year. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Very breezy. Yeah, very breezy. A little windy today. I don't know why. And it blew something in because some uh -oh. headaches were, were around today. People were sneezing yeah. and coughing. And I don't know what it blew in. but It blew, blew that something. pollen right into your nose, David. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was windy when that front came through yesterday evening. And then it stayed windy overnight. We're still seeing some gusty winds. And that's creating a bit of a wind chill. Good news, those winds died down later today. Let's put it into perspective for you. These temperatures this time of year, where do we stand? We got down to 47 this morning. The average low for this date is 59. So we were 12 degrees below the average. The record is 43. So we came within four degrees of setting a record low. Up there in Austin, they did set the record. So it was uh, chilly across the entire state. As we look at the cloud cover, it's still surging in here. We have some mid-level clouds that have been pushing through. And with those clouds in place right now, we're not going to warm up much, at least the next couple of hours. Once we get some sun this afternoon, and I think we see some, that will boost the temperatures eventually into the 60s, maybe close to 70 degrees. But the clouds are fairly thick out west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. So don't expect a big warm up there. We are seeing some breaks south of Pleasanton at this hour. Uh, there's the scene outside. Temperature is 49 at the airport, 50 stints in 49 Kelly, 48 Randolph. And you see the winds across the board there. 10 to 20 miles per hour and still gusting 44 comfort 43 Bernie stage 47 in Canyon Lake. You'll see 50s down to the south 51 Kennedy 50 right now in Victoria and 55 in Katua winds still gusting as high as 30 miles per hour actually 35 as you get up towards New Braunfels out of the uh, north and northeast. I think that these wind gusts will start to come down wind speeds will eventually come down but they'll probably take until lunchtime for that to happen. And because we have those very gusty winds, it makes it feel all that much colder outside. 43, the current feels like number here in town, feels like 38 in Kerrville. And uh, we mentioned that uh, we've got those cloudy skies. Rest of today, uh, we'll see partly cloudy conditions. Temperatures again up close to 70 for a high. Now let's talk dew points. The air is extremely dry, but by tomorrow we start to see the dew point jump up. And uh, quite significantly, by Thursday night, into early Friday morning, dew points are back into the 70s. So this is a very quick moisture return. That's going to allow clouds to filter in tomorrow, and that uh, could also lead to a few showers as early as tomorrow. Forecast shows that uh, we'll see partly cloudy conditions this afternoon, and then by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, some showers developing out west. Some of those could work their way towards San Antonio. Even late in the day, we could see some drizzle. There will be enough moisture there, I think, for that. Friday morning, we start off with drizzle, maybe a little bit of fog, a few showers, and then by Friday afternoon, some clearing in spots. That's going to create some instability, and we could get a few thunderstorms to develop. Right now, the model's showing most everything I-35 and east, uh, but that's not to say we couldn't see a thunderstorm out west. Not everybody is going to get a thunderstorm. It'll be a hit or miss type situation, but there is the threat for some severe weather. Slight risk of severe weather, Hondo, Kerrville, out to Rock Springs and points east. And this is a large area uh, where we could see some stronger storms. Most of East Texas, and on a scale of 1 to 5, we're talking about a 2. Hail, gusty winds being the biggest threats. 67 tomorrow with cloud cover. We just don't warm up much. 81 on Friday, and then it does clear out for the weekend. It'll be hot. 87 Saturday, 88 on Sunday. Guys. What a difference today to this weekend. It's going to feel very different. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Apple released several new products while the highly anticipated launch is getting a lot of attention. In your consumer news this morning, Netflix got a huge boost in subscribers last year thanks to the COVID pandemic keeping people at home. But now, with vaccines ramping up, Netflix reported subscriber growth slowed a lot in the first quarter of 2021. The streaming service reportedly 
added only 4 million subscribers in the first quarter for a total of 208 million global subscribers. That's 2 million short of the company's goal of 210 million. Apple's promised spring-loaded annual product launch event did not disappoint its fans. The highly anticipated updated iPad Pro is faster and now features 5G capability and a Thunderbolt port so it can connect to external monitors. The updated iMac has Touch ID for the first time and Apple also unveiled AirTags which use Bluetooth technology to help you find your keys your wallet, your laptop, or even your car. In addition, the new iPhone 12, which goes on sale Friday, April 30th, it offers a color scheme available for the first time, purple. Oh, that's awesome. We laugh and people have lost their cars in parking lots before. Oh, uh, I'm, right. I'm gonna, Don't know where one of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right, this might creep you out for just a second. A Target shopper didn't have something on their list. No, you sure they didn't? Browsing the aisle? They were caught off guard when a snake slithered across some canned foods. CNN's Jeannie Mose reports on the grandmother who's now having a good laugh over her close encounter with the reptile. Attention shoppers, that's no mere spill in the grocery aisle at Target. That's a snake. And there is a snake on top of the baked beans here. Now you'd expect to see snake jewelry at Target or a snakeskin bag or Drano Snake Plus to unclog your drains. But when Diane Dupre first saw an actual snake at this Apex North Carolina Target. I thought it was a, a child's toy. So I thought, oh my goodness, somebody's pranking me. Where's the camera? But she ended up whipping out her own camera, finally realizing it was real. The tongue came out, <laughs> and that's how I knew. Diane couldn't stop chuckling about her own reaction to the snake that targeted Target. I can't even look at this. It's hurry. hurry. <laughs> oh my God. I'm telling the men to hurry. It was a harmless rat snake that employees removed and released back to nature. Target says it sanitized the area and brought in a pest control company to do a full evaluation of the store. According to an animal expert at North Carolina University. These snakes are out of hibernation. They're moving around. They're looking for food. They might be looking for mates. Well, don't look at Diane's snake. She already has a mate. Shelf of beans in from the bush and onto the bushes. Genie Mose, CNN, ah. New York. Yeah. That's ah. funny. She thought it was a toy at first. Uh. You know, that's a pretty steady shot on her um, yeah, camera phone for seeing what it was. No, yeah, not bad at all. Not mm, bad. Mm, 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 mm. A lot more ahead on JMSA at 9 this morning. Voters will choose the next mayor of San Antonio and who represents their city council districts in May. But Proposition B causing a lot of confusion. Myra Arthur and RJ Marquez will explain still ahead. And one man is going above and beyond to help pups in need. Later on in the newscast, the reason behind starting his nonprofit Bat Band for Paws. And after the break, we're going to have Katie's Science Lab. Yay! We're going to learn how to make bird feeders out of milk jugs. And also, as we head to break, a look out at Trans Guy. There's 281 at Loop 410. Things running smoothly right now. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 9.31 right now. Today for Katie's Science Lab, we're learning how to make bird feeders out of milk jugs. So David and Katie are in the studio to show us just in time for Earth Day tomorrow. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Yes, Earth Day tomorrow. Very excited. Sarah Spivey's going to talk more about Earth Day. We are just all Earth Day all the time. And I'm actually reading to a class tomorrow, Mrs. Ramos's class at Field Elementary. I'm going to read to them tomorrow for Earth Day. And she actually gave me the idea for this experiment or activity. It's kind of more of an activity. You know, I'm going to um, ask, what are you reading? Um, Have you decided yet? She dropped off the book, and now I don't, now I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to do with Don't worry, Miss. She'll get it. She'll get all afternoon. I'll practice. To read through it and make sure you get it. I'll <laughs> practice. But it's she gave me. The teacher. <laughs> she gave me this idea. Her class. They are making these bird feeders out of milk jugs. And of course, the idea is that you won't just throw your milk jug away when you're done with it. You can make something out of it, reuse it and help cut down on waste. So you will need a plastic milk jug. You'll need some scissors, 
box cutters, wire cutters, so this does require some adult supervision, wire or rope to make the, the hanging part of your, of your bird feeder here. You'll need some bird seed and things to decorate the bird feeder with David. Ooh, um, this looks like fun. Yes. First of all, we have box cutters and scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Sharp things. So I already did mine, David. So this is nice. what you're this is what you're aiming for. Okay, so you can tell me what it's supposed to be. This is yours. So you're going to want to cut out, you know, where the birds can sit, and then you're we're gonna put the bird seed down here. So you wanna cut out little little windows That's for your little, birds. Little windows for the birds? Yes. I'm gonna take these glasses. Okay. You nice. don't want to go too low because, okay. okay, remember you got to have your mom or your dad around when you. Yeah, I was doing this last night and it was, it was, it can get, it can get out of hand. So Dave, while David's doing that, um, I was able to find this wire at Home Depot, but you could also use rope. That would be something you could use to make the, the hanging part. So I'm going to, I'll help you out, David, while you're doing that, I'm going to help cut your wire. There's, I'm sure, I don't have traditional wire cutters, so my husband was like, you just use these. <laughs> and I can imagine that traditional wire cutters would probably work a little bit better, but I was able to kind of make an indention here and then use the scissors to cut the rest yeah. of it. How's it going, David? Well, that's We're a good, good trick. How about yeah. that? And that helps you cut a piece of it off. And you really don't need, you don't need very much. <laughs> good job. So that would probably be sturdier than a string though, right? I, I, I think so. If you had some thicker rope, it would probably be okay. Look but this that. is oh, also. Oh, so milk in it too. All right. Uh, sorry, I thought I cleaned it out better. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I got to poke a hole in there. Yeah. Right? So then, once you have your your well, side parts cut thing. out. Yeah, these box cutters, man. So then you'll poke two holes at the top here to put the wire right in. There. And this is slightly bendable wire. I think you could even at oh, it might have been gosh, yeah. um Michaels or what's your favorite store just in Hobby Lobby? You could find some <laughs> bendable wow. he talks about his love of Hobby Lobby. You could find some wire that's this is fairly easy to bend, but I think craft okay. wire would be better. So David then you're gonna put your wire in. Okay. And this, see, maybe that was a little too much. It just depends on where you're going to hang it, what branch you're going to hang right, it on, or where you're going to hang it, how much room you need. Yeah, cool. And then you could get in there and, and make little, like, twist the wire up so that it doesn't so come out. But that can be done at any time. And then the fun part for the kiddos is that you can decorate. So I haven't decorated ours yet. I'm going to decorate mine before reading to Mrs. Ramos's class tomorrow. But you can paint. You can do glitter. You can do stickers. I think it'd be cool to make it look like the earth. That's kind of a big understanding. Earth day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job. And then we'll put our bird seed in. I didn't realize this was the hot, hot pepper wild bird food. Oh. And it says you should avoid contact with skin. Oh. Really? So. Okay. Love. Yeah. Good for the birds, not good for your skin. Okay. <laughs> I'm not an expert on bird food, so I didn't realize this was so spicy. But uh, pick up some some bird food, some seed okay. for for the birdies yeah, and enjoy. That's cool. You got the spicy oh. bird feed for South Texas. There you go. Very appropriate. Exactly. So enjoy your new bird that's feeder. Cool. That's, that is that's, awesome. That's and have fun reading to the class tomorrow. Thank you. And happy Earth Day, everyone. Yes, happy Earth Day. Thanks, guys. And David, I'll see you in a moment. Wardrobe change. I'll go hang my bird feeder in the tree outside. <laughs> Let's take a look outside with live cam. It is cold out there uh, in the 40s still. Uh, I definitely felt the wind chill when I stepped outside. Uh-huh. It's uh, quite a change. You know, it's it's late April. It doesn't feel like it, but here we are. We got close to some records this morning. We did set a record low in uh, Austin. So some changes uh, today. Now we'll see more changes tomorrow because clouds and moisture come back and maybe some rain chances. We'll get into all that here in just a little bit. Let's first start uh, with our pollen count. It's in. Mold jumped up today. It's at 1780. Oak is moderate. Pecan and grass both low. So mold leads the way today. And as we look at temperatures across the state, it's not just cold here. It's cold just about everywhere except Deep South Texas, where they're still in the 70s. Front hasn't quite made it all the way down there yet. And as you look at the big picture, really cold stuff across uh, Intermountain West, Casper, Denver, although they're a little bit warmer than they were yesterday. But this cold is spreading east, places like Cleveland, Chicago in the 30s and 40s this morning. And there's still some snow out there uh, near the Great Lakes up across New England. Uh, so this cold air mass will continue to work its way out of the country. We're going to be up around 70 today if we're lucky. If this cloud cover sticks around, we may not quite get there. Uh, so a mild day. But again, changes next few days. 
hopefully, hopefully some rain as we get into tomorrow and Friday. We'll break down that forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Transguy, it looks like there's a stalled vehicle or something that happened there on 35 and Loop 410. Uh, traffic is still flowing, though, but you may want to watch out for that area. And voters will choose the next mayor of San Antonio and who represents their city council districts in May. But there's another big issue on the ballot that's been getting a lot of attention and causing some confusion, and that's Proposition B. Yeah, Case that Explains team tackles that one this week, breaking down what you need to know before you vote. Here's R.J. Marquez and Myra Arthur with a preview. It's a way to hold bad officers accountable. It is defunding of police. Just two of the arguments both for and against Prop B that have been made during months of debate on this proposition that will be before voters in May. So this episode takes a look at all of the ways Prop B would and wouldn't change the way that San Antonio police negotiate contracts with the city of San Antonio. Yeah, and where do we begin here, Myra? Because this has obviously been a point of a little bit of confusion for a lot of voters out there as they head out to the polls for early voting leading up to election day. So really our goal with this episode was to just kind of break down exactly what Proposition B is, try and answer as many questions that people might have and really kind of dissect what are the ramifications if it passes, what would happen, what would be sort of the next steps after that. So there's a lot of questions that people have. Hopefully we get to answer those in this episode. And you talk about those next steps, that's really important because what happens with Prop B is not where it stops. The group behind this proposition fix SAPD. They have a much longer plan and we lay out all of uh, their their strategies, what their hopes for, uh, their hopes are for changing police reform in San Antonio. Of course, we lay out the arguments against Prop B, why the San Antonio Police Union is very much outspoken against this proposition. And we take a look at how contracts or how police pay and benefits and discipline are handled in other cities mm -hmm. across Texas because San Antonio uh, certainly does it through collective bargaining, but that's not the case when you look at a lot of the other larger cities in the state. Yeah, and that would be a term known as meet and confer, which we break down and we explain for you guys in this episode because, as you said, Myra, there's a lot of the largest cities in Texas, they do things differently, and of course, San Antonio is unique uh, in the way we do things as well, but uh, it's an interesting comparison and also kind of an interesting way to look at the differences uh, from other Texas cities, especially the larger ones here in the state. And our goal for this entire episode is to give you the information, the facts that you need to make a decision on how you will vote on Prop B. We fact check a lot of the arguments that have been made throughout these, again, months long debates for and against Prop B and let you know what it would and would not affect if it were to pass. You can check out this episode right now on ksat.com slash explains or the ksat tv app it is now 9 40 and it is 50 degrees you're watching gmsa at nine and earth day is a day to remind ourselves how important it is to take care of our home planet after the break the history behind earth day and why it was created and welcome back. It's 943 Earth Day. It's tomorrow, and it serves as an important reminder to take care of the planet. Yeah, Sarah Spivey now joins us live here in the studio to talk to us about why Earth Day was started in the first place. Yeah, so it's really amazing. Earth Day actually began in 1970 in response to large-scale pollution. So in the first half of the 20th century, there were no regulations for industrial pollution. We drove vehicles which contained leaded gas, and dense smog was actually a regular occurrence in large cities. Rivers even caught on fire because of sewage and industrial, rate, industrial waste. And on the first Earth Day, which was 51 years ago, 20 million Americans, which was about 10% of the U.S. population at the time, took to the streets and parks to protest against the industrial waste. And the first Earth Day enjoyed largely bipartisan support, with President Nixon even planting a tree at the White House. And as a result of the support for the first Earth Day, the Environmental Protection Agency was created. The EPA was created. Legislation such as OSHA and the Clean Air and Water Acts were passed too. 
And over the years, vast improvements have been made to our air quality. This was very fascinating to me. In fact, carbon monoxide has gone down by 85% and lead has decreased by 98% since 1980. That's according to the EPA. So how can you celebrate Earth Day tomorrow? Well, Katie Blake just showed us a great way. You can make that uh, bird feeder out of the old plastic jugs that you may have lying around. You can do things that are considered more environmentally friendly, like using reusable bags, carpooling when possible, consuming local produce at our local farmer's market is great, and supporting local ranchers, as well as, of course, saving electricity. So I have a bad habit of leaving lights on oh. in rooms when I leave. And my husband has given me gentle reminders like, hey, turn off the lights. It saves us money. <laughs> and That's it also helps the reminder. environment. It totally yeah. does. Uh, and Earth Day happens every year on April 22nd. So tomorrow we're going to celebrate the Earth. All right, good ways to celebrate. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. I learned to turn off light switches back in the 70s. Oh. Well, I learned and then I forgot. <laughs> and I have to learn right. again. In other words, light switches in the 70s. Yes, <laughs> yes, Justin, we had electricity in the 70s. I, yes. right. I know that's a shock to you. <laughs> hey, David, you were there for the first Earth Day, so that's I, cool. I was. I was. Part of it. So I've contributed to all the reductions in yes. all the carbon monoxide she was talking about. So Absolutely. he is an Earth Day expert. So there yeah. You go. Well, you know, by the way, I didn't. That stat: 98% less lead. Yeah. yeah. That's that's, that's good. I remember when there was lead gas, and then it went to unleaded gas. Oh yeah. Big deal. Yeah. Got to teach y'all some history. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sarah, as well. And as we go outside with uh, weather headlines, let's take a look at what we're going to be watching the next couple days. Today, cool, breezy. Partly cloudy, we'll eventually lose some of these clouds, but it stays on the cool side even through the afternoon. Tomorrow, clouds return. We'll see some showers, maybe even some drizzle late in the day as moisture really starts to surge back in. And then by Friday, some morning drizzle, and we could see a few storms late in the day, maybe a couple of strong ones. There's a look at the satellite picture. We still got some clouds coming through, but notice there's a break starting to show up. Uh, back behind these clouds and so eventually again we'll see some sun probably next couple of hours but in the meantime it's keeping temperatures chilly 49 at the airport 43 Bernie stage 48 in New Braunfels 49 Gonzales 50 Valdez, and then some thicker clouds out west 54 right now in Del Rio here's a look at the time lapse you can see the clouds working through uh, we have yet to see sun really this morning and uh, 49 again at the airport with those breezy winds and winds have been as high as Gusting as high as 35 in New Braunfels, gusting as high as 30 in Hondo. So they're still pretty strong. That front yesterday really kicked up the winds, and we're still seeing some of those uh, gustier winds. Uh, these will ease off. These numbers will ease off some as we get into the afternoon. 38 is what it feels like when you factor in that good northerly wind in Kerrville. 40 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. feels like 43 here in San Antonio. Uh, wind chills uh, not really an issue down to the south, but they'll continue to be in place up across the hill country. Forecast for today, we mentioned 70. That's if we can get a break in those clouds here soon. Otherwise, we'll probably stay in the 60s. Uh, northerly winds 10 to 20. Here's the forecast going forward. And I mentioned those clouds tomorrow morning. So we'll fast forward to 7 o'clock on your Thursday. Clouds surge in, and we may also see some showers uh, developing out west. Some of those light showers work east, and then maybe even a little bit of drizzle starting to mix in, especially Thursday night, Friday morning. We get drizzle, light shower activity, lots of clouds. It starts off fairly damp on Friday. But as far as measurable rain goes, don't know that we'll see a lot of that until we get to Friday afternoon and Friday evening. That's when we could see some thunderstorms developing. Now, it's not going to be widespread. We're not going to see just a ton of thunderstorms, but isolated to scattered uh, possible. And what thunderstorms we do see could be strong to severe. There's a slight risk of severe weather, hail, gusty winds, your main threats. And that stretches from the hill country, San Antonio, all the way across East Texas into parts of Louisiana. Again, that is on Friday. Forecast for today, 70, 67 tomorrow. Cloudy, 30% chance of showers from drizzle, 40% chance of storms as we get into tomorrow, Friday afternoon, I should say. Clearing out this weekend, 87 on Saturday, 88 on Sunday. Guys. I like the sunshine. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 949 and 50 degrees. So usually Batman will save people, but this time he's saving animals. After the break, how his nonprofit is changing the lives of pets and people. It is not just fighting crime that keeps Cape Crusader busy these days. A real life Batman has been putting a lot of miles on the old Batmobile. And his mission has been taking him far beyond Gotham City. ABC's Will Gans has a story. 
these days, Batman is more paw than pow, and he's branching out of Gotham to help rescue and transport animals in need. Batman and Robin here. Chris Van Dorn is the man behind the mask. It's not every day that you get to reveal the identity of the Batman. That is true. I don't normally do, you know, uh, you know, face revealing interviews. <laughs> Chris is also the man behind Batman for Paws, a nonprofit based in Orlando. Why the Caped Crusader? Not only did he look super cool, um, he didn't really have any superpowers, you know. Um, he was just a guy, uh, you know, trying to make a difference in the world. Chris getting the custom suit and a Robin costume for his own rescue pup, Mr. Boots. Hitting the road in a slightly modified Batmobile to transport pups to no-kill shelters and sometimes to their forever homes. Just before this interview, Chris wrapped an 18-hour round trip to North Carolina to reunite this pit mix with his mama. You could see that the dog was excited to see his mom. You know, like you could tell he remembered and knew he was finally back home. And that makes it, that's priceless. That is priceless. So that makes it all worth it to me. Chris has driven dogs and cats and even rescue rats from Florida to Colorado and Vermont and just about everywhere in between. Chris using his days off from his job as an audio engineer to make the long trips. I try to, you know, rescue as many animals as I can um, when I have the time and it's very gratifying. And then fighting crime at night, is that? <laughs> exactly. For more information on Chris's nonprofit, check out Batman, the number four, pause.org. Da na 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 na, Will Gans. ABC News, New York. <laughs> Wow, very nice there. It is uh, game night here in San Antonio as the Spurs take on LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. No, that is not the, no. uh, that's the old <laughs> Miami Heat. Remember those days? Uh, yeah. Spurs taking on the Heat tonight. Tip off at 730 at the AT&T Center. Spurs looking for their third straight win. Look to be mostly healthy tonight. Uh, Miami has got a few guys that are questionable. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero. So go Spurs go. Hopefully they could get back on track here at home. And please don't mess with Patty Mills, okay, Miami? Oh, just don't yeah, mess with for Patty. sure. Yeah. That was so rude. No killer three from the corner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, let's look at the forecast. Uh, we've got clouds right now. Some sun this afternoon. We'll be up close to 70. Cool tomorrow. Lots of clouds. Some showers. And we'll have a chance for a few storms Friday afternoon and evening. And we really needed the rain. So hopefully we'll get it by Thursday. That's my hope. The aquifer is still dropping. Of course, we're now in stage two. So we, uh, we need the rain desperately. Tomorrow's going to be the light stuff. It's not going to add up to much, but as we get into Friday, maybe, maybe some thunderstorms as we get into Friday afternoon, Friday evening, we'll have to watch for a couple of strong storms. We will keep our eyes open Friday night. And then a yes. great looking weekend. Great looking weekend. Well, so we need to rain nice. on Friday and then a great weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Essentially times out perfectly. That's, Perfect. That's, yeah. that's the plan. Well, we'll, we'll thank you out. for the nice forecast. We get a little bit of everything, Justin. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here for KSAT 12 News at noon. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.